Good evening, everyone. Normally I come to you in the morning, but this time I wanted to bring you guys in our back garden uh, right around dusk. I wanted to let you guys know why I've been gone for a few weeks. My husband's career is physically demanding and his knee's been bugging him quite a bit and it finally just gave out. So multiple doctors, MRIs, x-rays. He's going to be okay, but it kind of got to a point where he couldn't hardly walk. And um, he, we do this kind of together. <laughs> so I wanted to make sure that I could devote all my time to him and make sure that he got to everywhere he needed to go for his tests and to see what we needed to do about his knee. But he's going to be fine. I wanted to start this evening in our backyard where I have two baskets hanging here right in front of our hydrangeas. Planted these begonias at the beginning of summer with tricolor ipomia. And now that it's not in the hundreds anymore, the begonias are loving it. And I have not uh, pinched them back. I haven't deadheaded them. I've, of course, cut the potato vine quite a bit and I'm probably gonna have to come in again but I'm gonna let these go as long as they can until the cool the cold cold weather takes them I also wanted to give you an update on our hydrangeas right here the Merit Supreme of course the Lamium the begonias everything's looking great except for right over here in the corner and quick little story I thought our German Shepherd Chief was marking them over and over again. And so of course I'm overwatering them. One day I came out here and I think my husband and I were out here together. Of course my eyesight is just awful. And he said, I think something is leaking over here because it's so mushy. Well, right over here where our sprinkler system is, there was a leaky valve. And that is why these hydrangeas look so scary. Um, I think they're gonna be okay because what happened is when we found out that the valve was leaking, we just cut the water to everything over here. We, we can't separate the, the drip from our actual sprinklers because the system is so old and we would have to dig everything up. So we just cut the water to everything until my husband could fix the valve. And even when he was able to fix it, we wanted this area to dry out. So I think they're gonna be okay, but that's why they look um, a little sad right here. But other than that, they're looking great. They're, you know, I'm gonna get a little bit of burn just because, you know, we have been in the hundreds, but they're all pushing growth and um, I just love this look right here. Okay, let's come over here. <laughs> I specifically wanted to stand behind the salvia leucantha just to show you how tall these get. I'm nearly 5'9", and I'll make sure that I insert pictures of what it looked like in the winter when we trimmed everything back. I'm not sure, but I think I've talked my husband into finding a new home for these. <laughs> because if you look, it's hard to see anything behind it. So you can't really enjoy the Oklahoma redbud. See a little bit of the plumbago, but this has kind of smothered geraniums, my yellow lantana, my dianthus, I have artemisia. So I think this is gonna be gone come this winter. As soon as it's done blooming, I think we're gonna find something new to put here because it's kind of smothered too many plants. <laughs> right here, all my geraniums right here are amazing spring bloomers. And what happened when we planted all these that were, I think I almost got everything on clearance, they were so little. And I landed up having to pull several antenna, several dianthus, because you literally could not see any of those anymore because the geraniums got so big. I'm happy about that because they put on an amazing spring show. I have some Russian sage that I need to move. It doesn't, um, kind of got a little smothered and I think it gets too much water over here. 
This Artemisia right here was almost as tall as the fence. And about a month ago, I cut it down maybe 10 inches. And look, it's already been pushing all this growth. So we're gonna work our way down here. Here we are, it's almost gonna be October. And I have what looks to be a pretty nice looking bloom on my Macrophylla hydrangea. These guys kind of go through the ringer during the summertime, but they're all beginning to bounce back now that the temperatures have cooled off. And then the calla lilies over here are starting to come up again, which I absolutely love. And they're white ones. One of the things in this area, if you kind of, I don't know how far the camera picks it up, but we took, what was it, seven of the rock and fuchsia salvia? There were seven that I had lined all along the walkway right here. I loved them, they're beautiful, but because they were so high, it was difficult to see what was behind it. So this is where we put the bandana yellow lantana and all the salvia, rock and fish salvia went to my mom's. So in the springtime, I will definitely take you back to her place and show you what it looks like. Coming around here, the purple trailing lantana always does amazing. It, you know, you know lantana, if you, if you live in the heat, that's, that's when they give their biggest show is during summertime. My early blue hydrangeas are all gonna be placed somewhere else. Hopefully here in our garden, somewhere in the shade. Quick little story on what's been going on with these. Last winter, when California had all that rain, it came with a lot of wind and a lot of branches. We have three redwoods in the back and the one furthest west um, did not have very many broken branches, but the two right here that flank the hydrangeas, they, we would come out from either being gone, running errands or up the next morning and huge branches would be laying across the hydrangeas, across everything. And I think what's happened is it has made this area more sunny. And that's why they've kind of suffered. I still want hydrangeas, so maybe some limelight prime, maybe. But that's why they don't look super healthy, especially this one over here. More lantana right here. The irises that you'll see back here, those are all iris that I brought from our front garden to our back garden. And I think they look healthier here than they did up front. Probably because I separated them. The lemon tree is being moved over to where I think it's a privet that was planted years ago that they turned into a tree. They kind of limbed it up. That we're getting rid of, we're cutting down and digging it up this fall and we're moving this over there. I'm gonna keep it in its pot. The lemon tree doesn't look as big as it did a few months ago because a tropical storm came through Southern California and we didn't get a whole lot of rain, but we received a lot of wind and one huge branch broke off, was laying against our Meyer lemon tree, and half of it was broken off, laying on the ground. I lost quite a few lemons, but that's not why I'm moving it. I'm moving it because I want the lemon cypress that you see behind it to be more showcased and to have its own moment. And I feel like the lemon tree hides it a little bit. And that is why we're gonna go ahead and move it. And that way we can have something a little bit lower in front of the lemon cypress. And when you come around the pathway here, you'll be able to really take in that tree that just started as a little 12 inch lemon cypress tree I bought at Christmas a few years ago. And I would say, how tall do you think that is? Is that 
eight, ten, ten feet, maybe ten feet. So it's grown quite a bit. I actually think it's very pretty up against our yellow um, shed. This area right here by the doghouse is where the other um, Salvia leucantha are. And I'm hoping that this is the only one we keep over here. Look how beautiful it is. I mean, they are just such a beautiful plant when they're in bloom. But I'm telling you, they are a beast. And they kind of overtake everything. I had pansies and violas here in the winter when we had it pruned back. Well, I should say spring. And as it began to grow, of course, it smothered it out. And I couldn't even put any summer annuals in there. But if you come over this way, you'll see it has grown over the ogon grass, the agapanthus. They're somewhere back here. But I don't, it might have even killed it. I hope not. But our dog can't even get in the dog house. So look how huge this thing is. It just takes up, and you can't even really see any of the flower bed down here. So hopefully he can be okay with just keeping that one right there. And we can get rid of this one and the one over there. And finally, I just wanted to show you just a little bit of our patio. I think I showed it when we did the budget tour, I'm not sure. And with the temperatures finally cooling off, uh, the boys have been wanting to kind of come out here and say, hey, let's go eat in the backyard. It's so nice back there. So we thought we'd do some s'mores tonight and grill some steaks. And I feel so lucky that our boys are at home and they actually want to hang out with us from time to time. So I just did nothing really fancy. I just thought we would have a little evening out here. I have put some violas in our, come around here, in, in our boxwoods. Oh, let me tell you real quick. Any plant that you see <laughs> out here in our patio, all of them, every single one of them, were all behind the white swing because it just can't handle the heat. It, it can't take the heat here. And I would say, ooh, maybe about a week and a half ago, I was finally got to move them out. I even trimmed up the boxwoods, but you can tell, look, even just with us having 80s, it's just gotten a little bit of burn, but they're doing, they're doing really well. They're very healthy. They've been in the shade all summer. These are Baby Jim boxwood. When I did the budget tour, I bought a bunch of impatience on clearance, I think for a dollar or something. And these were all maybe this tall. And I, someone had said, can you please show us what it looks like when they all grow back? And I probably should trim them. There was one rogue red one in there. I did not know that. <laughs> But they look amazing. And they will stay and keep growing. I don't really want to prune them back because with the temperatures cooling down, they'll probably fizzle out probably around November. So I'll put something else in there. But my heart topiary is doing well. Um, oh, and these are my other impatients. These right here, look how big they are. They just spill over the side. Over here are more impatients and coleus. Oh, this area right here gets a little bit of morning sun and that's it. And then it, as it shifts over, this is in the shade all day. But I don't have the heart to take these out yet and put violas or pansies or anything winter in because they look so pretty right now even. And I checked the weather. I almost bought pumpkins to put out here. And it's going to be in the 90s this next week. I think we're supposed to get a little bit of rain tomorrow. And then we're going into the 90s. Uh, I hope it's just for a short amount of time because I'm ready for fall. I always like to try and tell you if I catch a really good deal. And I have two things that I wanted to share with you before we say goodbye. We went to Lowe's the other day 
think my husband needed to buy a plug for some lights that we're going to show you. And I had kind of been in the market for a new uh, indoor outdoor rug right here. We saw Christmas stuff that they were rolling in on pallets, getting ready to unbox already. And then on another pallet, they were wrapping up summer stuff to put away. So I saw a few rugs and I said, hey, are these on sale? The guy had a scanner and he said, some of them are, some of them aren't. And I was kind of eyeing this one because I wanted something neutral. And he said, yeah, it was normally two, 218 or 220, something like that. And I got it for 89. So I think that's a pretty good deal, more than half off. The last thing I wanted to show you in our garden were these brand new lights that my husband installed. I have been wanting to do this for so long. I asked him if he could hang lights from our shed all the way to the edge of our property line. It's about 60 feet from the shed to the fence. They're on sale for $31.99. They're $8 off right now. They're, the electrical cord is 48 feet long and there's 24 lights on the cord. And so we had to get two and he modified it there at the end. This I have wanted for so, so long. And I thought it was gonna be difficult, but um, it went up, oh, I'd say what, did it take you less than uh, what, a half an hour? To drill each hole and put a hook in and they're, the creeping fig kind of just hides the hook so you don't even uh, really see it. I'll make sure I put in a photo of what it looks like at dusk. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope your fall's gotten off to a really great start. We'll see you soon. Bye.